What's going on guys? We're ready to roll out another one. Let's do it. Alright, so for today's episode, we're going to be doing some custom work on this side-by-side. -side. It's not a real big job, but there is some custom bracketry work that we've got to do for a cargo carrier on the back. So we're going to get this unloaded and we'll show you what we got. All right, so here's what we got. This cargo carrier, he likes the cargo carrier, but he doesn't like the location of it. Because if you look here at the profile of the bed, how there's a angle here, he wants to be able to push it further up towards the cab. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make it mount to these screws, and then I'm gonna have to build a piece, a custom piece right here with a taper that the back side can have a screw running through it. And there is a screw here that we can use. So it should be a fairly simple project. We're gonna burn a piece on the table. We'll break it and we're gonna build it just like this. So he wants to be able to slide it forward so that he can utilize more space back here. And it'll also get it up in the air so that he can slide a cooler underneath it. So that's the plan. We're gonna start pulling some measurements and we'll draw up a picture of what we need and we'll go from there. All right guys, so I wanna go over one of the first upgrades we've done to the interior. So having four kids, longevity of the interior is something that you would naturally be concerned about because kids are hard on things. I know because I was one at one time. So what I've done is I've bought the Chevy molded floor mats I actually had WeatherTech in my last truck, but I didn't really care for them because they were more of a hard plastic and they start curling in the corners. If you buy the factory floor mats that cover the whole floor, they're custom molded to the floor and they're more of a rubber material. They interlock in the middle and I really like the way they lock in and seal everything out. And then you can see like along these corners, everything is custom molded. I did have to trim the back. They give you a factory trim line that you need to cut. And then you lift up this storage container, have to pull a couple bolts and slide it underneath. And then you bolt it back down on top of it. So they're really not going anywhere. If the kids get in and they get them dirty, I can just spray them down with some cleaner, wipe it off and it's back to new. We'll show you the front as well. Okay, so you can see here having the front bench seat. I didn't want my kids putting their feet on this carpet. So I wanted to be sure and get these floor mats that would cover everything. And so, again, they interlock right here in the middle. This is completely covered in rubber. It pretty much seals out all the carpet. So your feet shouldn't ever touch the carpet with these type of floor mats. You know, this is gonna be a work truck, a play truck, it's gonna be a lot of things, but keeping it clean is something that I really wanna to try to do if I can help it. So I'm happy with them so far, and I think it's gonna be a heck of a lot easier to keep my truck clean and keep it looking new. So just wanted to show you guys that upgrade. All right, so I think the first thing we wanna do is start pulling these bolts, and we wanna get it loose, and we wanna set it up where the customer wants it and then we'll bolt the front section down and then we're going to rig up the back I may just suspend it with the crane I don't know we'll take a look at it but we want to get it set up where it needs to go and then we can take our measurements and start getting a design put together for what our parts are going to look like All 
All right, so we got one screw here that's it's been stripped out. So we've got the other three out fine. I'm going to take a screw extractor and pull this one out. And we'll end up just swapping it with a good screw, one of these other ones. It's time for today's super cool tool. Alright guys, so for today's super cool tool, we're going to be talking about this screw extractor and drill bit set. This set has come in handy for me on multiple projects. So let's just go over what's included in the set first. Here you can see we have from 16th of an inch up to half inch, and these are all left-handed drill bits. Now the reason you'd want a left-handed drill bit is because if you've ever snapped a bolt off or you got a screw or something that's broke off and you're trying to get it out most of the time if you heat it up a little bit and you center punch the broken screw and then you start running that left-handed drill bit in there most of the time it will come out because you're spinning in a left-hand direction it will most of the time it will pull that screw out so it starts backing the screw out if it's in there tight enough where it doesn't you can still drill down through the bolt and then once you do you can use either an easy out which there are six different sizes here or these screw extractors and I really like these one of the cool things about this set hopefully you can see it but each one of these will tell you what size of drill bit you need to use this one here is 930 seconds so you want to use a 930 second drill bit and I like that there's all the sizes of drill bits here so you can actually grab the drill bit hurry and drill it if it doesn't pull the bolt or the screw out you grab the extractor and then grab a half inch wrench or half inch socket tap on this a little bit to get it seated down in the hole and then nine times out of ten it's gonna come out we did have one screw on this one that did not come out but the reason it didn't come out is because it was up under here and I couldn't get to where I could tap on the extractor to get it to seat. So it was just a crappy spot to get to. We were still able to get it out through other means and methods. Another thing that's worth mentioning with the set is it comes with these nut removers. So if you've got a nut or a bolt that's stripped out, you can take these and they'll fit over the top. Sometimes you want to tap on them, but you can see they're made for 3 8 drive and then you're able to put your ratchet in there or a wrench on the outside so it's kind of cool that they are you know dual use and then you're able to back it out it comes with a 3 8 drill adapter so that you can use your impact gun to back the screws and the bolts out so the brand on this set is Topek I believe and I got it off Amazon and it was a hundred dollars it's been a great set I haven't had anything break I really don't know if it's got a warranty or not, but I like that it's a complete set for extracting screws and bolts. So that's been a dang handy tool to have. So that's gonna wrap up this week's super cool tool. Get yourself a screw extractor set. It's gonna save you a lot of time and headache. You are definitely gonna run into situations in fabrication where you've got stripped bolts or screws and you've gotta get them out. So this is a tool that's definitely a must for fabrication shop so get you one that's gonna wrap up today's super cool tool so this is a really good lesson I'm pretty sure I've never had a fabrication project that has ever taken the amount of time that I thought it would it always takes longer because you always run into stuff like this a stripped screw which can take you I mean it could take you 30 minutes to get the stripped screw out so it's very rarely ever as easy as you think it's gonna be oh we got this some visitors out here cool cool got my glasses Okay, so because I don't want to go buy a drill bit and take all my profit off this job, 
I'm going to tack a bolt into the top of this screw. You got to be careful. You can't put too much heat into this because you got so much plastic. So we're just going to hurry and tack it and get it out of there as fast as possible. Bridger's bringing the welder over. We're going to plug it in. We're going to get this tacked in. This almost always works. So let's give it a try. Okay, so ah, that's how you win. <laughs> okay, so I want to show you guys. Hopefully you guys can see this, but if you look at the hole where this goes, it looks like whoever put the machine together, they didn't get the bit all the way in. They only got it about halfway. So now the next guy that comes along that wants to pull that out, he puts his bit in there thinking he's bottomed out and you're not so you end up screwing that up and that's when you have to weld a bolt onto it because you can't get to it so you want to make sure you're bottomed out on stuff like this this one's not bad but you can see this one's stripped out too so i'm gonna it will definitely help if you try to get this by hand instead of using the milwaukee ratchet that way you can just go nice and easy gentle pressure and try to get it out All right, so we've taken our measurement here and here. We know what the height of it is now. Now we just need to know what the flange width is going to be. Two and a half on the flange. Okay, so we got our drawing here. We're going to go over to the burn table. We're going to start drafting it up. I'm hoping that I can break top and bottom and then cap the sides. And I'm going to do just like they did here, where I'm just going to inset the outside piece. We'll just do it the same way they built this piece. That way it'll look like it matches. And then he just wants us to spray paint it. He doesn't want it powder coated because he says he might be changing something here in the future. So we'll go over to the table. We'll see if we can get this drafted up. Okay, so we got our part all drafted up. Hopefully everything's right. So we're gonna burn one, we're gonna break it, check the fit, and if it fits okay and all the bolt holes line up where I want it to, we'll go ahead and we'll cut the end pieces that are gonna get welded in place and we should be good. So let's see what happens. Okay guys, we got this laid out. We're gonna get it over in the break and we're gonna see how it goes. I may have to score one of these and break it by hand. We'll end up welding it, but I am possibly gonna have to do that because I don't know if I've got enough room with my break. So I'm gonna give it a try. Here we go. I'm gonna break the larger section first because it's gonna be easier to break this one by hand if I have to do that.
we're going to get lucky. I might have to massage this with a hammer. As you can see, it's not exactly broke. So I'm going to show it a little love with the hammer, but I think we're there. Okay guys, we got our part broke. I think this is gonna work. You can see we do have our piece to fit up in here, but it's kind of a custom bent piece of tube. It does have kind of an angle. Our holes line up here and here. Hopefully you can see that and here. So it's gonna bolt up here, 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 and here. That should keep it from going anywhere kind of got to be a custom bent piece it's not really perfectly square it's got a little bit of a lean to it so now we're gonna go to the other side do the same thing that we did on this side but we're gonna break it the opposite way and then once we get ready to start fitting our end pieces for rigidity we'll come back and we'll show you guys what we got Alright guys, we got this one all fit up, so we're ready to start measuring for our cap pieces here and here, give it a little bit of a finished look. So I'm going to start getting some measurements, get that all figured out, and then I'll go over to the burn table, draft some pieces up, cut them out, test fit them, and then it'll be time to get over on the table, and I think I'm going to TIG weld these, and then I'll give you guys a look. Alright guys, so we got our parts here, we've cut our end pieces so we had to make a custom fit part because our piece has kind of an offset to it and then I'm just gonna tack them and then I want to go check the fit so that's the plan Okay, so now that we've got our part tacked up, I'm going to go over and check the fit. No, I'm not. I'm going to tack this piece on first. Okay, so we got our piece all tacked up. Now I'm going to take it over and see if it fits. Okay, I'm pretty happy with that. I like the way it looks. The gap is going to be just right so it doesn't rattle. There's clearance here. All of our holes line up. So I'm going to go ahead and take that one over. I'm going to get some weld put on it and then we'll let it start cooling. We'll just do the same process with the other one. Fit it, tack it check it and then weld it out we'll get all that done and then we'll come back and give you guys a look
Hey guys, we got this all welded out. I am going to clean this up with a grinder, smooth it up, make it look nice. I still need to weld that face out, so I'm going to go do that now. But that's all that's left as far as the welding goes. Then we're going to let them cool. We'll buff them off, clean them up, and then I got to shoot them with some spray paint. So we'll go ahead and finish the welding and then we'll go to paint. Time for paint. I've been using this Rust-Oleum two times ultra cover it's paint and primer and I actually really like it for stuff like this. It lays on really thick and you don't have to do the primer before the paint. Paint dry, paint dry, so it just takes one step out. It is a little more expensive. I want to say it's 10 to 12 bucks a can but I have been impressed with this stuff since I started using it. Okay, another thing I want to share with you guys here real quick. This box here is from sawblade.com. I don't know, maybe two weeks ago, I was having issues with my saw blades. I stripped two of them back to back, just like that. And they were brand new saw blades. I was a little frustrated, but honestly, there's a lot of places you can get them. So I was ready to just find somewhere else to get them. I was not real impressed that I had two smoke blades back to back. And it wasn't because I was abusing them. I was running the saw very slow. There was fluid in the saw. All I was doing was cutting one piece of square tube. When it would go through the tube, as soon as it would hit the seam, that's when it would smoke the teeth. So it just so happened that one of the salesmen from sawblade.com called me and wanted to know if I wanted to place another order to keep my inventory up or something. And I told him, well, I think I'm good, but since I've got you on the phone, I do want to complain a little bit. So he says, yeah, go ahead. So I told him what had happened, and he said, well, that's not good. Let me transfer you to our quality control department, and let's get this fixed. So I ended up talking to a guy on the phone and emailing him back and forth. They wanted to know all the details about, you know, how fast my saw runs, how fast I run the feed speed, uh, how many teeth were on the blade, is it a wet saw or a dry saw, so I gave them all the details. So when the guy emailed me back, he said, we've got a recommendation for you on a different saw blade, it's got a different tooth pitch on it, it's a little bit harder material, so we're going to send you two free ones, we're going to send you one free one right up front, we want you to try it, if you don't like it, we won't send you the same blade but if you do like it we'll send you one more just like it for free so i thought that was pretty cool i was impressed that they stand by their product 
They sent me this blade. The tooth pitch on it is quite a bit smaller than the one I was running. So I'm interested to see how it goes. This is supposed to be a lot harder material. And I do use my saw blades to cut both stainless, mild, aluminum. You guys know this, so hopefully this one will hold up a little better. And I'll keep you guys posted on how it goes. Oh yeah, and they also sent me some new hats. So I think I'm ready for a jog. Not really my style, but I do appreciate the gesture. I just wanted to share that with you guys. I always think it's good when somebody stands by their product and you know, you pay good money for these blades. So I do think it's neat that if the blades don't hold up, they're willing to replace them. Anyway, just wanted to share that with you guys. All right guys, we didn't realize the camera had died. So we didn't get any footage of the assembly, but we'll show it to you after we get this last bolt tightened. Good and tight. The angle turned out good. The gap turned out good. He's got about half an inch consistent across the whole back of the windshield. I did add two stainless bolts here. Well, these two stainless bolts are what holds this end of the rack. You got one factory bolt here holding it in up there, and then a factory bolt here holding it to the bed. Looks pretty good from the side. So me and Bridger are gonna get the tools cleaned up. We appreciate you guys watching. Appreciate your guys' support. The channel's growing. We're excited about it. We hope you guys are enjoying what we're putting out there for you. So that's going to wrap this one up. So thanks again for watching. We'll see you on the next one. All right, guys. So for today's episode. <clears throat> Goodness sakes, I'm always choking. Okay, so you can see here, being a, you know, having the, you're going to run into situations in fabrication where you need a set of fabrication. You are definitely going to run into situations in fabrication where you're going to have to... So Bridger's rolling the grinder over. Come over here and we'll plug it in right here. Bridger's bringing the... I thought it was impre I was impressed. So me and Bridger are going to get the tools cleaned up. We're going to get this loaded back on the trailer and then hopefully the customer will come. And we'll see you on the next one.